Welcome to Monday's Mental Mistakes. This week we're looking at Bayesian conservatism. Here's a simple example. Suppose I have two bags, each with a thousand marbles in it. One bag has 700 red marbles and 300 blue marbles, and the other has 700 blue marbles and 300 red marbles. We'll call these the mostly red bag and the mostly blue bag. Unfortunately, I left one at home and only brought one with me today, and I don't know which one I've got. At this point, it's equally likely that I brought either bag. Now, suppose I reach in and draw out a single marble. It's red. I put it back in, shake the bag, and draw out another marble. It's blue. I keep doing this until I've done this a total of 12 times. Overall, I drew out a red marble 8 times and a blue marble 4 times. What is the probability that the bag I have with me is the mostly red bag? If you thought that the probability was much less than 97%, then congratulations, you suffer from Bayesian conservatism, like the rest of us. If you draw 12 marbles with replacement, and you get a total of 8 red and 4 blue, the odds that you are drawing from the mostly red bag is about 97%. But most people estimate the odds at about 70%. This tendency to underreact to evidence is called Bayesian conservatism. Bayesian conservatism is the tendency to underestimate probabilities in the light of evidence. That is, we adjust our beliefs less than we should when presented with new evidence. Bayesian conservatism makes us more likely to downplay the significance of new evidence. At the same time, we're unlikely to recognise the importance of new information. The principal way to counter Bayesian conservatism is to consciously adjust for it. Research has shown that when people are paid for more accurate assessments, they are able to reduce the effect of Bayesian conservatism. This suggests that people can correct for this bias when they have sufficient incentive. However, while the bias is reduced and can even be eliminated, the accuracy of predictions isn't improved as much. That is, when given financial incentives, people produce estimates that can still be inaccurate, but no longer tend to underestimate probability shifts, instead over and underestimating at about the same rate. The name Bayesian conservatism comes from the theorem in probability theory called Bayes' theorem, which is the mathematical rule for updating probabilities to account for new evidence. Since people tend to change their probability estimates less than they should, and favour their old estimates, this is called Bayesian conservatism. The reason this bias is interesting is not that people are inaccurate with probabilities, but rather that they're systematically biased in one direction. Bayesian conservatism has been repeatedly demonstrated in a laboratory setting, with problems like the one I used at the beginning of this video. But it's also well established in real-world settings, particularly in financial markets. Research has shown that investors systematically undervalue the importance of new evidence when estimating the true value of shares on the stock market. So when companies announce profits, losses, or major news events occur, investors tend to downplay the importance this will have on the prices of shares. The existence of Bayesian conservatism shouldn't be taken to mean that people will always underreact to new evidence. Most of the research into this bias has involved relatively small shifts in estimates of probabilities from mundane events. So they probably don't accurately capture what happens when we're exposed to a shocking or unexpected event, or events that would demand a major shift in thinking. Such occasions are likely to be governed by other cognitive processes, biased or not. In conclusion, Bayesian conservatism is the tendency to change our estimates of probabilities insufficiently in the face of new evidence. Until next week, may your mental mistakes be minor.